What's up guys, I'm Dave Klein, and welcome to my Dark Souls 3 lore series. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most influential characters over Lothric and what it would become. One who devoured gods and even gained a full church worshipping him, Aldrich, Saint of the Deep. Most of St. Aldrich's background is unclear, but what we do know is that he began as a simple cleric from Irithyll, the Boreal Valley, and he was likely a cleric of the Way of White. Aldrich is said to hail from Irithyll in the Boreal Valley, an ancient fabled city. A right and proper cleric, only he developed a habit of devouring men. In fact, he didn't only devour men, but came to love it. Alderich, infamous for his appetite for flesh, apparently had the desire to share with others his joy of imbibing the final shudders of life while luxuriating in his victim's screams. Perhaps out of fear, or perhaps out of respect for what he had become, Aldrich gained a mighty following, and many began to worship him. Eating people also began to take effect on him and transform him. He ate so many that he bloated like a drowned pig, then softened into sludge. So they stuck him in the Cathedral of the Deep, and they made him a Lord of Cinder, not for virtue, but for might. Such as a Lord, I suppose. And thus began the true worship of Aldrich, Saint of the Deep. His influence began with his clergymen and evangelists who helped to spread his worship. The evangelists left the cathedral along what would become known as the Road of Sacrifice in order to spread the gospel. They were the mentors of the dwellers of the undead settlement, and these teachers, all women, came to enlighten inhabitants of the undead settlement and sent carriers on the path of sacrifice. In other words, the evangelists brought the worship of Aldrich to the undead settlement along with all of their rituals. The various carriers, with cages strapped to their backs, found in both the undead settlement and Road of Sacrifice, would transport undead corpses to Aldrich in order for him to devour them, and hence, how the Road of Sacrifice got its name. At the foot of Lothric Castle, an old path still runs below the tower in the undead settlement. It was used to transport sacrifices to the Cathedral of the Deep. Now, this is purely my speculation, but I think many of the evangelists and those who worshipped Aldrich did so in order to avoid being eaten. There's nothing in game that implicitly states this, but it seems like a very likely cause for why the evangelists would come spread the gospel to the undead settlement. Instead of risking themselves being eaten, why not find others to feed to Aldrich? Additionally, I believe all of the torture seen throughout the settlement was brought on by the evangelists. It's likely their spreading of the Gospel of Aldrich was rather forceful, and those who disobeyed were the most likely to be sent to and devoured by Aldrich. Although, it's also just as possible that followers of the Aldrich Gospel would purposely sacrifice themselves, perhaps thinking it would make them something greater, and a part of that whom they worshipped, Aldrich. Followers were burned, and evangelists fed them red bug pellets, who dole them out to followers to ease their suffering when they burn. And, of course, these burnt undead were most likely sent to Aldrich to be devoured. Now, one problem with eating undead is that they never truly die. Therefore, the remains of those Aldrich ate were placed outside of the cathedral, with Grave Wardens watching over the corpses. Grave Wardens were tasked with disposing of the ever-rising corpses that plagued the cathedral. These corpses were only a part of the aftermath of the things Aldrich created as a byproduct of his cannibalism. In the cathedral slumber things most terrible, and as such, the deacons require a grand narrative to ensure they do not falter in their duty. It seems yet more foul abhorrent beasts were created due to Aldrich sharing his joy of flesh. The Aldrich Ruby and Sapphire can be found on the two malformed beasts, each stating Aldrich had the desire to share with others his joy of imbibing the final shudders of life. The Deep was originally a peaceful and sacred place, but became the final arrest for many abhorrent things. One survivor we know of this was Horace the Hushed, who is one of two children to have actually survived and escaped the clutches of Aldrich, with Henri of Astora likely being the other, considering they both seek Aldrich. And especially since, as Space Pirate Lord pointed out to me, she says the following line when she witnesses Horace die. Oh, Horace, why? Don't 
don't leave me. Not you. Not like the others. At some point along the way, Aldrich became a Lord of Cinder, and therefore sacrificed himself to the fire, either forcefully or by choice. Eating so many people would have made him more powerful, filled with souls, making him the perfect lord. But being a Lord of Cinder isn't exactly a great fate, especially after one learns what it entails. Ah, it cincheth to the bone. It hurts. Please, help me. Be done with me. No, God, no. I cannot bear it. It burns, burns. Help me. And due to the bells tolling to bring back the Lords of Cinder in order to feed the first flame, Aldrich came back. Aldrich, saint of the deep. And at this point, Aldrich became disillusioned with the fire. Aldrich became a lord by devouring men, but was disillusioned with his throne and so took to devouring gods instead. So, back again as a lord of Cinder, when Aldrich ruminated on the fading of the fire, it inspired visions of a coming age of the deep sea. He knew the path would be arduous, but he had no fear. He would devour the gods himself. We reached the Cathedral of the Deep, but Aldrich's coffin was empty. The man-eater must have left for his true home. Aldrich left behind his coffin in the Cathedral of the Deep, and after Aldrich left for the Boreal Valley, Archdeacon Royce remained in the Cathedral with the High Priest to keep eternal watch over their master's coffin. Aldrich had three Archdeacons, and of the three Archdeacons of the Deep, one stood over Aldrich's casket with hope that he would return one day. Meanwhile, another of his two Archdeacons, McDonnell, joined him on his journey to the Boreal Valley and home of the gods. The third Archdeacon, Archdeacon Klimt, chose to leave the service of Aldrich and serve Rosaria, Mother of Rebirth, instead. He discarded his weapon that draws upon one's faith on the day that he put his own faith behind him. And we know from Rosaria's fingers that they were the sacred seal of Archdeacon Klimt, who served Rosaria, Mother of Rebirth. One interesting note about the Deacons of the Deep and Aldrich is that their souls are the only two souls which are blue in hue, which would seem to be a result of how the Deep has affected them. I think this is especially interesting to note when trying to consider what the Deep is, and how it may relate to Dark and the Abyss, especially considering their souls look nothing like High Lord Wolner's soul, who was consumed by the Abyss. Before leaving for the Cathedral of the Deep, it's possible Aldrich began as a cleric in the service of Pontiff Sullivan. The small doll estate, in the legendary old city of Irithil, situated in the Boreal Valley, the Pontiff Sullivan gave this doll to valued subjects so that they might use it to cross the barrier when they return home. This doll can be found at Aldrich's tomb, and if he was at some point in possession of it, perhaps Pontiff Sullivan gave it to him before he left the Boreal Valley. Either way, in Irithil the Boreal Valley, Pontiff Sullivan helped Aldrich in his cause to devour the gods. This tower is a prison. Thy presence shall invoke the ire of the tyrant Sullivan. This was likely in order to further his own purpose and become more powerful himself. The Dark Moon Knights were once led by my elder brother, the Dark Sun Gwendolyn. But he was stricken by illness, and leadership of the Knights fell to me. Then Sullivan wrongfully proclaimed himself Pontiff, and took me prisoner. Pontiff Sullivan locked Yorshka away, and imprisoned a god of the old royalty in the abandoned cathedral to be fed to the devourer, this god being none other than Gwendolyn, the youngest son of the mighty Lord Gwyn and the first Lord of Cinder, who took a lord soul from the first flame. In fighting Aldrich, we can visibly see his resemblance to Gwendolyn, a result of him devouring the god, and he chooses to shoot Gwendolyn's moonlight arrows as an attack, he wields the Dark Moon Longbow, a longbow of Dark Moon Gwendolyn who was gradually devoured by Aldrich. And it's possible Gwendolyn wasn't the only one he ate. Aldrich dreamt as he slowly devoured the god of the Dark Moon. In this dream, he perceived the form of a young pale girl in hiding. 
It seems devouring Gwendolyn inherently gave him some of Gwendolyn's knowledge and that of Priscilla's location, and at some point he also managed to see Priscilla, a dragon-human hybrid from Dark Souls 1, either that or the knowledge at least allowed him to imitate her scythe. It's also been suggested he ate Nito as well, given the blade on his staff resembles the Gravelord's sword from Dark Souls 1. Additionally, his theme music resembles a combination of Dark Sun Gwendolyn's theme Grave Lord Nito's theme. From Dark Souls 1. Also, his bottom half looks suspiciously similar to Nito. However, there's no hard evidence, and considering that I believe it to be canon the Chosen Undead kill Nido in Dark Souls 1, while both Gwendolyn and Priscilla were optional, I personally find this unlikely. Another interesting thing to note is that by defeating the various bosses in Dark Souls 3, you can collect their armor from the Shrine Handmaiden. However, for defeating Aldrich, you instead are only able to collect Smo, a cannibal from Dark Souls 1's armor. This has led many to speculate that Aldrich could be Smo's soul reborn, as goes with the theme of Dark Souls 2. Personally, I think it may simply be fan service by From Software, but I'll leave it to you to decide. While Aldrich ate the gods and presided over Anor Londo, ruminating over the coming age of deep waters, Archdeacon MacDonald remained in the Irithyll Valley and made it his duty to protect Aldrich at all costs. He started the Aldrich Faithful Covenant with the purpose of ensuring that Aldrich, devourer of gods, remains undisturbed by taking the form of loyal spirits and hunting down those who would trespass the ruined cathedral. He would then delight in taking from those he killed the human dregs, heaviest things within the human body, and will sink to the lowest depths imaginable, as a token which he would utilize. One final note is there's actually a character named Aldrich in the recent Dark Souls comic, and he happens to carry around a doll with him. The series hasn't yet finished, and it's unclear if it's canon, but it's still worth considering. And thus, from the Undead Settlement to the Road of Sacrifice and Cathedral of the Deep, and further into Irithyll, the Boreal Valley, and Anor Londo, home of the gods, Aldrich was one of the most influential lords of Dark Souls 3. He, his followers, and allies tore apart all that came their way in order to feed the flesh-hungry Aldrich. Alright guys, that wraps up the first of my Dark Souls 3 lore videos. If you'd like to hear deeper theories about the Deep and what it is, I'd recommend checking out Mad Luigi's video on Aldrich. Whether you agree with it or not, it's definitely an interesting interpretation and I think worth checking out. Additionally, if you'd like to hear more theories against Priscilla and Nito having been eaten by Aldrich, then you should check out Sentinel Akira's video on just that. And I hope you enjoyed my video re-uploaded for deeper accuracy. I highly recommend checking out my Dark Souls 1 lore series if you need to catch up on the lore of Dark Souls 3, and I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts below, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Bloodborne gets rid of shields almost entirely, replacing them with guns in a much more aggressive style of combat. I mean, there's only one singular shield, the wooden shield, which is fortunate, being that wood is totally bulletproof. After playing two hours of an early build of Demon Souls, Shue Yoshida, Sony Computer Entertainment's head of product development, concluded, This is crap. This is an unbelievably bad game. Maybe then we could truly see, see beyond our mind's eye, that there is a way, a potential for humans to evolve beyond their natural limitations.